What's up, Iowa Wild fans on Facebook Live? Thanks for tuning in. I am Joe O'Donnell, joined by Matt Boldy, the 20-year-old. First-round draft pick back in 2019 by your Minnesota Wild. Made his pro debut this year with Iowa. Bolds, how are you, bud? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. It's been a while. Uh, what have you been up to? Not much. Uh, nice finally being home. Um, my summers aren't too eventful. Been uh, been out on the golf course a lot with uh, with my friends and my brother, but... Other than that, just, just the usual stuff, working out, skating, hanging out with my friends and family. Kind of a crazy year for you, Boston College, Team USA, your pro debut. Was it nice to ch- kind of just get back and settle in? Yeah, definitely. I think especially after the summer we had last summer, it was, uh, it was crazy with COVID and how long it was and just waiting to play and not knowing that when that was going to be. So kind of have having a, a set plan this summer and, and knowing when you're going back and when the season's going to start, so definitely a good feeling to have. Again, this is uh, Matt Boldy, the Wild Forward, joining me, Joe O'Donnell. This is The More You Know with Joe. I believe episode six sounds about right. Uh, you can check out on our Facebook page uh, previous episodes. Last week, we had Damian Giroux. Uh, we've had Kaylin Addison, Connor Dewar, Mitchell Chafee. The list goes on. Next week, we're expecting Hunter Jones. And, of course, Monday of each week, or certainly by Tuesday, we're posting a little written feature by Ben Gisselson on sort of the player we're spotlighting each week. Again, IowaWild.com for all the latest news, including the Keaton Thompson signing and the home opener announcement. It'll be October the 22nd. A full schedule, I'm expecting, in a matter of days, Wild fans, so get excited for that. And, of course, season ticket holder information as well at IowaWild.com. Also, did you see any of the previous episodes uh, where I, I kind of lay out a questionnaire for the uh, the victim of choice. No, I haven't seen any of them. Oof. All right. Well, I won't take that personally. Um, real quick, before we get into that, you mentioned your golf game. And when Benny G did the write-up on you, uh, he mentioned the competitiveness that you play golf with. How mm-hmm. is the golf game? Golf game's good right now. I've, uh, I've been playing a lot, so starting to come together. Um, handicap's pretty low right now, but... Depends. All depends on my driver. If I can hit my driver, then then I can go pretty low. But sometimes I struggle with it a little bit. But now that competitiveness, that sort of natural athleticism that I, I think that you have, do you? Is there anything you don't do well sports wise? Basketball. Basketball is my worst <laughs> by a mile. Um, I I like to consider myself pretty athletic pretty good at most most sports just can kind of pick it up but basketball i'm terrible now late uh late in the iowa wild season the team went to uh schaumburg illinois to play the wolves and there were basketball courts out the hotel there Senesta inn uh i think you were with the team at that point in fact i'm sure you Uh, were did you partake in that little kind of makeshift pickup game i did i wasn't too bad that game but i definitely uh i missed my fair amount of shots for sure okay i have also seen you play bags or as some folks would call it cornhole Mm -hmm. and when i witnessed that display you were pretty darn impressive (laughs) um would you like to share just sort of that element of your uh, athletic arsenal yeah that that was uh i had a good partner mitch mcclain too we uh we ran ran the table uh there pretty well but I don't know. I feel like that's that's a game I've always been good at. My uh, my family's always had a board and and at holidays and stuff like that. When we're together. We're always playing, so kind of picked up on that uh, quite a bit. And it's, uh, I got a pretty good bags game for sure. Do you have a custom Boston College bags board? My dad actually made his own bags board, and it's got uh, like all our siblings like logos on it. So there is a BC logo on the on the board. Cool. Uh, what are your expectations for training camp? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I try not to, to think about it too much. Um, kind of just kind of focus on myself and go in there and just have fun with it. I think that's when I, when I play my best rather than being really nervous about it. Um, obviously, I have the expectation to, to try to make the big team, and I think that's everyone's goal going in, but you know, I try to kind of go on with a clear head and go on and, and have fun rather than go on stressing about everything and, and being nervous. So that's kind of my mindset going into it. What surprised you the most about the American Hockey League when you joined the Iowa Wild? I think just just 
how much better everyone is. I think the best way to to describe is just everyone's one step better than than they are in college, and it's it's everyone on the ice. So obviously that that one step adds up quite a bit out there, and and there's less there's less breakdown in the play. I think playing out there with out in Iowa and, and really. I mean, I got 14 games in, which is quite a bit. So being able to see see different teams and, and how good guys are and how guys are always in the right position. They always have the right sticks and there's not really a lot of space to capitalize on, on mistakes. So you definitely have to create a lot more by yourself and with your line mates. And, and all that creation comes with having to play super fast and, and think fast. And I think chemistry plays a huge role in that and playing with guys that think the same way as you and, and want to want to produce and want to play creative. Is, it definitely helps a lot. You had 18 points in 14 games with the wild. You scored three goals in the first four games. What do you remember about that pro debut where you had a goal and an assist? Yeah, it was, uh, that was a pretty crazy night. Um, Back and I, forth. Yeah. My brother and dad uh, were able to come down and, they got to watch it too, which was really cool to to kind of share that with them. But it was pretty crazy. I think going into it, I was a lot more comfortable than I think I thought I was going to be. Um, I had a few days there in Iowa before the game at practice with everyone, and everyone made me feel at home and, and pretty comfortable. So going into that game, I wasn't really as nervous as I think some guys are going into their first pro game. But yeah, it was it was crazy. It was back and forth game. Um, Pretty high scoring, a lot, a lot of, a lot of plays made. That was, that was probably the biggest thing I took from it. Just, just how many, how many guys were out there making plays and making things happen, happen and stuff like that. So, the expansion draft is just a couple hours from now, and then this weekend the NHL draft. Obviously, you've been through that process. The twelfth overall pick in two thousand nineteen by Minnesota. Were you anxious going in to your NHL entry draft? I was. Um, I was pretty lucky. I think I played at the national development program for two years and we had a pretty stacked team. So we had eight first rounders, I think, which is crazy. Um, I think we had 22 draft picks, 21 draft picks overall. So you kind of got to share that, that experience with them, which I think brought the nerves off everyone a little bit because you knew that all your best friends were going through it. But uh, I was definitely nervous. Um, my mom and brother tell the story of, of me once it kind of got into the range that we thought I was going to get picking that my legs started to bounce and, and you could definitely definitely see that I was I was pretty tense and and nervous but yeah it was uh it was a pretty pretty great day though uh just all the relief comes off you once you hear your name called and I was definitely nervous for a while but but it was an awesome night one of those teammates Cole Caulfield ends up debuting with Montreal he got a little time in the AHL um, and then he goes on a heck of a playoff run. They go all the way to the Stanley Cup final. How much were you uh, texting with, with Cole or I guess just following along and watching him? Any surprise there from, from your perspective? Uh, no, there wasn't much surprise, to be honest with you. Um, just knowing Cole and, and who he is as a person, I knew that he was kind of going to go in and light it up. Um, I talked to him a good amount. Uh, he's one of my best friends, so – I was texting him along the way and he's uh, he's probably the happiest human in the world always. So the way he just does everything with a smile on his face and he's, he's almost carefree in a way that I think is something that makes him so good. He just, he just goes out there and has fun, has fun and he tears it up and he can score goals more better than anyone I've ever played with. So. Okay. I will wild fans. You can comment, drop your questions below as well. Again, thanks for tuning in on Facebook live. This is the more, you know, with Joe, and it's time now for our official questionnaire. All right, bold. You ready for this? Right. I'm ready. All right. Uh, if you had the opportunity to join any band, who would you choose and why? And the band doesn't have to be current. Um, probably Zach Brown band. I think. I think uh, they they got some good songs and they uh, they come into Boston every year right before uh, the start of school. So I got to go to a couple of their uh, their concerts at, at Fenway, which was pretty sweet. Would you play anything in particular, or maybe just be the hype man? Uh, I play. I think I'd want to play guitar. Uh, that'd be my go-to. What sport would you play if you weren't playing hockey? And this will certainly tie into what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, definitely golf. 
No doubt. What's the first thing you would do in a zombie apocalypse? I'd get, I'd get my crew together, the people that I want to be. <laughs> um, I would definitely definitely hunt down the guys that, that I want to be in that situation with and the guys that are going to help me the most. Some guys in the foxhole, so to speak? Yeah. I actually had that conversation one night with my room at BC. We were, uh, we were just sitting in our living room, and we, we went over everything about what we would have done, where we would have gone. It was, it was pretty like fun. A, like a, if the world comes to an end scenario? Yeah, exactly. We went through it all. Okay, can you share any of that plan with us? Uh, the the biggest one was because we were in Boston. We were gonna find a way to one of the islands, either Martha's Vineyard or or Nantucket. We had a uh, a guy whose whose friend lived in Martha's Vineyard. So we were gonna find a way there, and then we we're gonna try to clear the island. So then we were there alone, and we would have been fine. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, favorite smell? Um, favorite smell. I like the smell of gasoline. I don't know why. It smells just just smells good. You can smell it from a while, you know, a mile away yeah, too. Exactly. Um, the most used app on your phone? Uh, Instagram. What superpower would you have if you could choose? I think teleportation. Any idea where you'd go? Wherever I wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, no context here, but what's the last text message you sent? Uh, I texted my mom, what's for dinner? Oh. Is she in the same house? She is at work right now, so I'm, I haven't looked. I'm hoping she left us something to eat. Well, I'm hoping that she wasn't like, you know, baby in the middle or something. And, <laughs> and here's, here's Matt being like, hey, mom, what do you got for me? She'll, she'll be okay. Does she handle that stuff well? Yeah, she, she's, a, she's a good cook. She takes care of me and my brother here. So she usually, she usually does a pretty good job about leaving food here for us, but Every once in a while, we got we to gotta go out on our own and, and get something, but it's okay. We make it work. Who, eat, who eats more? I do, for sure. Definitely yeah. more than my brother, yeah. What's your favorite sandwich? Uh, turkey sandwich with some, some lettuce and avocado. What's the best kind of cheese? I think the best kind of cheese is American, but... I do like pepper jack a lot too. No pepper jack guys. Well, now when you said the turkey sandwich, you didn't mention cheese. Are you going no cheese on that turkey sando? I don't like cheese on my sandwiches. I don't know why. I feel like that's all I taste if I have cheese on it, even if it's just a little. That's a good point. So are you more of like a melted cheese guy on a burger type of thing? Yeah, I can do melted cheese on, on like a burger or steak and cheese, but like cold cuts, I won't put cheese on it. Wait a minute. Did you just say steak and cheese? Well, yeah. You, Is this yeah. like an imitation Philly cheesesteak that you're referring to? Yeah, it's the same thing. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Bolts. I got to get you down to Philly. <laughs> we can't. Where are you getting this from? Some Boston joint? Yeah, there's steak and cheeses around uh, here. I'm not first called of all, if they call steak. if they call it a steak and cheese, it's not. <laughs> Just called a cheesesteak, all right? And all right, all right, said right. anything else, how you bumps at me. Um, <laughs> I digress. If you had to be transformed into an animal, what animal would you choose and why? Um, that's a tough one. Um, maybe like a like a gorilla. Just, just absolutely massive, dominant. <laughs> or, or an orca. Those things are at the top of the food chain. You have seven dollars at the grocery store. What do you buy? I haven't done too much shopping for myself. Um, seven dollars. Seven dollars get you some chicken. Yeah, rotisserie chicken for sure. If you're going right. to Costco, I, I'd get a rotisserie chicken, no doubt. Maybe some sauce if I have some extra money. 
Uh, how did you survive in Iowa? This is not on the questionnaire. Um, <laughs> I'm not concerned about your well-being, but when you say uh, you haven't done much shopping, now I know where it was the tail end of the of yeah. the coronavirus pandemic. But how how did you how did you find being on your own? I thought I did pretty good. Um, I was there for probably like three or four weeks in a hotel with no kitchen. So I didn't have to worry about it. So I was eating out a lot. And then once Nick Sweeney came, I was there in a hotel with a kitchen. We cooked every once in a while and we made it work. It was simple, but, but we got it done. Back to the questionnaire. Last book you read. Not a big reader, so I couldn't tell you. Fair enough. Lastly, describe in five words what hockey means to you. Um, I think it's it's just having fun to me. Um, I think that's always the way I've kind of looked at it ever since I was little. It's never been something that's been been a hassle or been like I have to go to hockey practice or anything like that. Uh, it's just it's always been fun no matter what. And I think I try to make it as fun as I can just showing up every day. And like I was saying before, that's when I'm having fun. That's when I'm playing my best. I think I can make more plays that way. Or you're more loose, you're more confident, and, and it just makes everything better. It makes everyone around you feel better. Um, and that, that's probably the biggest thing for me. Well, if we went with always fun, no matter what, that'd be five words. So yeah. we'll, we'll roll with that. All right. <laughs> Would that be the advice to a young player if we got a young wild fan watching today or watching the replay? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think that and just don't get too drawn into it. I think especially nowadays, I think kids are only playing hockey from such a young age. It's, it's, it's I don't think that's, that's the best situation for, for young kids. I think growing up, my parents are pretty good about telling me to, to play as many sports as I could. Well, basically tell me I could play whatever I wanted, which, which was nice. And I think, Playing those other sports ended up helping me in the long run. Um, playing too much hockey, I think you get burnt out a little bit, and and you need time away from it to to be able to come back and keep having fun with it. If it's all you do, you kind of get sick of it quicker. But um, I think those two things are, are my biggest advice to to young kids: just just have fun with it and make sure you're not you're not too focused in at it at such at such a young age. We did get a couple of comments and questions from fans. I, I won't give you all of them, but. Uh... Who do you model your game after the most? That's from Brianna. Um, to be honest with you, I try not to model my game after anyone. I um, feel like when I try to do that, I definitely did that a lot when I was little. Um, watching highlights of guys before games and going and trying to do some of that stuff. I uh, feel like when I try to do that, I, I get away from the way that I play and the things that I'm good at naturally. So. I try not to model my game after anyone. There's definitely guys that I look up to and, and have a lot of respect for and think are really good players, but I never try to look at someone and be like, I'm going to try to play like them tonight. I think I go out there and try, try to play like myself, and I think that's something that, that I've always done ever since I was little and kind of something that, that my parents and dad taught me. Um, just go out there and, and play the way you know how to play. You don't have to try to play like anyone else or, or do stuff that you can't do, and whatever you have in your bag and you just work on those other things to get better. So that's probably my, uh, what I'd say about it at least, but. Jake asks if you have a pre, uh, pregame routine and what that might be. Yeah, I think, uh, I got a routine. I definitely wouldn't call it superstitions, but I, I definitely do the same, same stuff, uh, on game day, just, just taking care of myself, whether it be, Eat, eating a big meal before the game, um, getting a nap in, making sure I'm drinking a lot of water and stuff like that. And I get to the rink and I'll do the same things. I'll, I'll stick handle for a little bit by myself, um, get a good stretch in, play soccer with the guys for a while, which which I think is, is the best part of the pregame. You, you stay loose and at least our soccer games were, were pretty entertaining to watch and, and guys cracking jokes and stuff. And I think that that was my favorite part of, of my pregame ritual, but there's definitely stuff I do, uh, do every game, but it's more just, just to take care of myself and make sure that, that I'm feeling good by game time. Well, you sure seem to fit in well with your teammates in the brief stint with the wild mentioned at 18 points in 14 games, the Boston college product, Matt Boldy, wild first rounder kind of to join me. This has been the more, you know, with Joe, featuring Matt Boldy. And uh, again, thanks for uh, 
sticking with us for a couple minutes while I worked out those technical issues. And, and thanks for shedding some light into your background, what you've been up to, and uh, what you do in a uh, zombie apocalypse as well. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Bulbs. Again, Wild fans, IowaWild.com, season ticket holder information, and of course, the schedule coming your way in a matter of days. Thanks as always for tuning in. Bulbs, we'll talk to you down the line, buddy. Good luck this summer. Thank you. How are we going? All right, Wild fans, take care, everybody.